Hi everyone, um, welcome to Digital Vidya's webinar. Uh, the topic for today's webinar is kick starting your entrepreneurship dream with passion. And we have Khyati Mehra with us. She works two roads simultaneously with equal passion and love. She is working in a corporate sector with her for her sheer love of software coding and writing logics. Also, she is an entrepreneur and the founder of Khyati Works. Welcome, Khyati. Hi, Vidya. Thanks for inviting me. Great to be here. Thank you, Khyati. Um, just before I ha I hand over the session to you, I would like to help the ones who are joining in for the session for the first time. The webinar is uh, in the webinar. We everyone is on mute mode by default. So if you have any queries, you can just write down the questions on the right panel, which says chat. So you can just type in your question, and we'll handle all your queries once we are done with the presentation. So at around 3:30, 3:45, we'll we'll uh, handle your queries. Great. So it's over to you, Kathy. So uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for being a part of this webinar. Uh, I think you can. I think everyone can see the screen, the presentation. Yes, everyone can see it. Okay. So uh, the sole purpose of uh, you know me being here and sharing this journey, this story with all of you is that uh, you know I feel that all of us have a, have a passion. There's one thing that all of us. Really like would like to follow, you know, given a chance or given the right circumstances. We keep thinking that, you know, had had this issue not been there, had my job or a financial front not been there, I would have loved to pursue this passion of mine or this hobby or something. And I would have taken it to great heights. You would have a vision, you have everything. But somehow because of something that is holding you back, you're not able to pursue it. So I, I want to share my journey and my story. And maybe in some way, if it can impact you, if it can help you out, and if it can give you some strength to, to pursue your passion and, uh, you know, make you feel alive and happier, I think my, my, my job is done. So, like the first slide says, from the core technical IE world into a completely unknown territory, and not, not because I hate my IT job or had plans to quit or anything, but just because it made me feel alive. So is that is that enough of a reason uh, to start your entrepreneurship journey? According to me, that should be the core. That should be the main reason why you want to be an entrepreneur. So that has to be the basis of the core of everything that you do or everything you want to do. So I'll quickly I, I want to quickly talk about the growing up years, why I do, how come I do, and how come this completely different contrasting profession of, of being an artist. So uh, I was born and brought up in Amritsar and uh, I was a very studious student and I, I, I loved sciences, I loved math, I genuinely loved studying and I was an IT developer of my exam. So that's why an obvious career choice was non medical So in the background art was always a part of me. I liked to paint, find but because I love these subjects so much, I always knew I, I, I want to get into IT or I wanted to, to do something with the sciences. So, uh, you know, 11, 12 passed, I got into a good engineering college, into the science. So even in college, again, it was, now when I think of it, I realized, you know, I unconsciously, I was always a part of some art event or the other. I would paint these huge backdrops for stage and, you know, some stage events, and then I would do calligraphy. And there were times I would be doodling and it would become a nice, beautiful abstract. And by the end of my college, you know, my, my uh, friends would say or some, some bachelors would say that, you know, you are not meant for IT. I think you should, you should be an artist. I have those autographs signed by bachelors. So I would just laugh it off that, no, that's so I don't think so. Eventually I got into IT, you know, very happy, uh, good company, uh, started in 2004 started working. Then 2009, I was, you know, just, just getting settled into the IT world. But at that time, again, art was never a major part of me. Uh, 2009, I got married and I, I was settled, you know, more settled in life. Uh, good job, happily married, all that done. 
So uh, I remember I was just surfing the net and I happened to come across these abstract paintings, uh, you know, general, very colorful abstract. And I, it, it just blew me away. It was something like something woke, woke up in me. Some, and I, I knew I had to do this. Now giving you another background, I uh, plumbed in art in seventh standard, which is, I mean, that's the only subject I've ever plumbed in in my life. And our teacher wanted to make this, make those port, wanted us to make those portraits with trees, mountains, all the standard things. And I was not into it. I did not. I, I didn't like, you know, like uh, making those standard huts and, and whatever. So when I looked at these psychedelic abstracts, I realized that oh, this is this is one genre that is so me, and I didn't know that you know, this also exists. And uh, it was something. It was very liberating. I think. Till now, I had this fear that I'm not good at art, or I can't draw this kind of thing. This, this thing showed that you can just paint what you want, and it can be so beautiful, and the colors can be so happy. I think, and it, it, so that was the starting point of Jati work. That's how, you know, the initial uh, artist in me woke up, and I, I realized that I want to do this. So I couldn't help, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I would just, you know, be doing it, that I have to paint. So, I bought all the easel, I bought all everything with the art, I started painting. And really, I mean within six, seven months I had painted some abstracts that that I, mean, I absolutely love and I love people absolutely love now with their reaction. They were such beautiful abstracts and they had a lot of depth. There were so many things that I started. And uh, so initially after creating seven, eight paintings, I felt wow, I want this on a mug for myself. I want so you know that that started giving me ideas, and I said if I feel so happy, you know, having this on a mug or uh, you know having the same print on a mug or if some greeting cards for between the artwork, it would look so amazing. So you know that's how the the thing started giving me that I have to take it to people because you know people who knew me they knew I'm making these paintings and I'm attracted to greeting cards and stuff, and they they were also in absolute awe that. And we should take it for So I said, okay, you know, I have to, I, have to, I should do something about it. So uh, now, just imagine uh, a core IT technique person, and this is a completely different thing. I had no contact, I had no background, I had no reference. I didn't know what to do, who to meet, who to go to, you know, what are the rules, nothing. So that's when the struggle happened. So, uh, you know, I thought, okay, no problem. I, that urge was so strong to take happy work to another level that I, I literally you know, walked out and I, I mean I literally started going approaching stores, shops. I was in Delhi at that time. I, I was staying in Noida and uh, uh, I, I, I bought uh, say 50, 50, whatever number of printing cards printed. and I literally walked into uh, stores in Connaught Place. I remember some people there, not station, some, some big stationery and big shops. And I would just take the stuff and I'd just tell them that you know, this is what I do and you know, what you do. I mean, you like to keep it in your so, Again, no background. If you walk in, you know, in whatever shop I, I thought were appropriate. So, um, Giggles, uh, that store, that they said that, okay, you can keep the cards and you can have five minutes. If someone likes it, you pay you. I said, okay, I had no option. I said, let's give it a shot. And two months, uh, it was October, I think, when I gave the card. So by December, I got a call from the shop and got an order of 300 cards. So it was a big order for, I think, for New Year's Eve or something. And I was, I mean, so you know, these kind of uh, events, or these kind of things, then then that 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 made me even more sure that this has to be 300 cards. Wow, first order, huge order for me. And, uh, so. Uh, the initial struggle, I say, that that paid off. Also, there were these stationary ex, uh, expos in Pragati Nadan that time. I would visit them. I would share my you know, card. I would uh, you know, give them some samples and tell them that you know, let's let's discuss it. So it it was not an easy way to go. They would also know that I I won't I I, I used to look like an ID person. I used to talk like that. But I I just wanted to you know, get it done. I would tell them. Tell me if you want this number of products, I would, I would get it for you. So 
after that first uh, card order, uh, you know, I was I was pretty happy. And I think with those cards, more inquiries started coming in. And uh, then there were these online stores that I started putting uh, my uh, that I started putting my products. In. There were the shop over and it's handmade. I, I would open there was you could open your own shop there. So you know, slowly I started merging with uh, the you know this this chatting book along with my. Now, when I say the best of both worlds, you know, I had not uh, thought that my IT would work would help me in any way with that. It was more of a hindrance. Like all of us would see you know, that okay, the current job that I'm doing, I can't do that because of you know the tendency. Now, my IT work actually helped me out eventually. So, in the beginning, I didn't know it would be so helpful. What happened was I was sent to on site for for IT work. So we have to go for three months and for a long period. So I had to go for three months to do that. And um, that time, uh, so I had a lot of time. I was I was going traveling alone. So uh, all the time that I had, I would you know, keep uh, uh, researching or surfing the net and looking out for products. I mean, that's what I did in all the extra time that I had. And another th thought that struck me at that time uh, was that uh, there were a lot of New brands coming up like Chumba Pools uh, at that time, and uh, so they were also coming up with quirky, colorful things, very, very pretty, very beautiful. So I, I was always thinking, how will people know this is that this is a chatty work product? They will say it's a colorful, it's a painting, but when you look at a poster or a printed poster, how would they know? You know what will make it stand out? So I really thought, really thought, and. I started, uh, you know, talking to printers and asking them how how does it go. I had no idea. So they said offset printing, you know, number of pieces would be thousand pieces. You have to get one. So you have to get thousand pieces of one design. Now that kind of investment initially, and I didn't even have the places where I would I could keep these products. You know, thousand posters. Where would I sell it? I didn't have contacts. I didn't have so much marketing, and that. Actually, was a blessing in the time. I realized that no, I don't want to create bulk merchandise. I don't want to create thousand similar pieces and turn this into another, uh, you know, another thing that I'm doing now. I mean, it's not going to be a simple business. It has, it has to be a lot more than that. And people, when they see a chart work, they should know. They should just know by the it. Okay, this is different. So. So I started surfing the net. How uh, of you know I, I I thought I'll make posters myself. I started looking for techniques on the net. So I went to Texas. So then I found so many do it yourself DIY DIY things that you can do. Handmade posters, handmade mats, jewelry, everything. And the only thing was that they, uh, you know people would generally make DIY things out of scrap or you know things that are just lying there. Their home, and they would they would use it and make some other things. What I did, or the idea that clicked, was that I would use those techniques, but the raw material would be exceptional. The raw material would be really good. So, uh, what what would you know result? The, the result would be that the product would be very good. It would be handmade, but the quality would be really good. It will be very sturdy. It will not be a general you know, like that. A uh, uh, low quality handmade product. It will be a very high quality handmade product, and because each piece will be made by me, I could choose, you know, how I want to make it. I could make each piece different. So that that is how that is what set the vision for me, and that is how that is how I chose my line for that. I decided I am not going to create bulk packages. Not not even a single. Instead, I'm going to look out for techniques, learn the techniques, procure the raw material, and make each piece myself. And when when people know that this piece is a single piece, you know, there's no replica, they would value the product, and they would know the value of the product. So, uh, so that's how that line was set. When I went to US, uh, I I started you know buying the, the raw material. There were jewelry, glass tiles. They were not available in India at that time. So I sh I would just shop endlessly for tattoos for all my own tattoos. That worked so well for me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to go there. So I thanked my husband for that. 
And so then I came back and I started looking out for uh, exhibitions and everything. You know. uh, uh, people would approach me that there was an upcoming exhibition. And all that. So I was looking into it. Then uh, I got this invite for Dimmy Hart. Dimmy Hart is, 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 a, is a pretty good land, landmark. It's a very uh, place for shopping and see that stuff from all So it was a three day exhibit. Uh, I said, okay, I think that, that, that sounds good. So now for three years I had to make uh, that much of merchandise and everything had to be handmade. I had to do much. So uh, I remember that time, I mean, uh, because I was so passionate about that, I, would, I used to be so busy in office, but those one, one and a half hours of lunch break, I would just sit in my car and you know, work on the product. And um, I would just take a 10 minute lunch break. Then after coming from office again, three hours of that's how I created this whole you know, range of uh, things that I uh, wanted to sell at, at my first exhibit. And your first exhibit is always very special. You are very scared also. You don't know the people's reaction, what will they think. You feel your product is amazing, but you never know what people uh, have to say about it. So that exhibition was, I say, the first place of success. It was, it was amazing. The people's reactions, and still they, I remember people just coming to the stall and saying that we want to get a picture click next to your stall. The colors, they're such happy colors. You know? So those kind of uh, statements or things that people said, they really gave me a, a morale boost. And I, I knew that, yeah, I think I'm in the right direction. So one thing that uh, that time it was the first exhibit, so the pricing we had to set a very, very, very average price. And in that three-day exhibit, I think I did now one check, and because it was handmade, it was more of my effort. So the, the, the import, the investment was not important. So you know, actually, we actually did pretty well in that exhibit. Um, so uh, you know, after that, it was uh, because of that uh, three-day exhibit, a lot of people got to know about Chatty Works. We started getting more calls, more interviews. More, uh, you know, the recognition was in it. Then there was this article in Times of India for the Noida edition. So then, then I started feeling, yeah, I, again, that also keeps you know, helping you that you keep you going gradually, you know, going in the same direction. Then uh, I shifted to Bangalore after that, and then uh, you know, second Herald happened. There was an article in the then there was an article. And there were many interviews uh, online. There were some bloggers who wrote about that. Work. So all those activities, they were like an icon. So then after that, when I shifted to Bangalore, uh, uh, we had another exhibit uh, in Kishmandi. So uh, I did not change the pricing. The pricing was still like the initial production pricing. So you know, at that point, I realized. I mean, after the exhibit. Somehow I felt there, there was a uh, there was a diversion uh, in what my vision for Chatty Works product was and how people were perceiving it. And I I wasn't sure why what, what is happening. To me. Why is it that I can see this as an art souvenir? If uh, Chatty Works products are created out of my things or they are hand painted, why can people you know do it in the right perspective? Some people some people will understand it, but for some people. I wasn't going to be sure. And then, you know, I, I uh, so there was a lot of introspection. I kept thinking, what is, why is this, why is there a difference in uh, perception? And then, uh, you know, after many days of thinking, I, I did feel that pricing of a product should be optimal. It cannot be too high and it cannot be too low. If you want people to judge the product by its actual quality, you have to set the right price. That was a very important or a very uh, uh, good lesson that I learned. And by that time, people had gotten used to that that pricing range, and you know, so that kind of clientele was around. But I knew I had to raise the bar a little bit because I had to, because then people would ask why, why the price, and then they would get an answer because it's it's, a, it's an art souvenir, it's a piece of art, it's not a general daily use product. It's, it's something that you would use at a special occasion. It's 
something that you would give to your loved one on a very special occasion, not something that you would just buy in five pieces. That's not that, and only because I had not been using this that way. If someone wanted to sell more products, you know, sell or do more in numbers, I think that would have been perfectly fine. But for me, it was more like each. So if, if someone buys a pendant, he should know, he should feel that wow, this is the one thing I'm going to save and keep for good. And the second reason was keeping the pricing low. I was not able to give, uh, you know, or package it in the way I wanted it to. I had to cut corners. If I priced it optimally, I was able to give that packaging, like uh, a pendant that we sell now, is made, is, is sold in a handmade box. That box is also made by me, and each box is unique. Why? Because the way it's uh, clipped on all four sides, there are there are these unique eyelets that I got from my office. What I mean to say is the whole packaging of the product is unique, and that takes effort, and that takes time, and that involves you know some some investment, some money. So the pricing has to go a little. I was very sure about it. I wanted to be comfortable giving the best to your time. So that was a big risk because, because the, the, there were people who move out party who were constantly purchasing things, now raising, changing the price in between. But I but again I was sure I had to take that plunge. I knew it could result in maybe a ten percent fall in sales or whatever. But then I was sure that that, that I'll reach the right thing. So that that's where getting there comes. So uh, initially, initial few months, you know, I took I, it took me some time. I kept, uh, you know, marketing the product. I just put in all of it. I, I uh, was more active on social media, and uh, you know, the interviews and everything were happening. So, uh, you know, I felt that yeah, I think slowly I would be able to reach that point, and I would be able to reach the right people. And really, you know, after say three, four, five months, that really happened. And I also uh, started my own e-commerce store uh, when I took the driving. I started my datwork.com. Uh, so the shipping, payment, everything was easy. So that also gave me a lot of it was easy to process all of the So after that, really after a few months, you know, I started uh, clicking uh, with the right people. Uh, you know, people bought, uh, they wanted to buy huge canvas prints or a latest uh, one person. That I wanted to be uh, your friend. She's leaving uh, for for a while. You know, she's going to get some lunch, and you wanted to give something really special. And the way he said it was made me so happy that I just got anything that I wanted to do. So, so you know, those instances or those uh, things would would keep reminding me that yeah, I am on the right track, and I have to be patient, and I have to. Uh, talking about future plans. So right now, because I have my IT work, startingworks.com uh, suits me perfectly. I'm able to handle it, you know, and I can go off and on while I can handle it. It does not impact my work. And I am, I, I still love my IT work. I love writing logic and all that. So, uh, so that is equally important to me. So I, I would hate it if uh, either of you, the startingworks is impacted my IT or if IT. I don't know that it is at that time. But eventually, I do plan to set up a study of uh, in the city. Uh, it would just be a single address. And I don't want to spread it across the city or, you know, uh, because I don't want to play in quantity. It has to be quality. It has to be unique. And uh, because I have that backing of my ID work, that I'm not so dependent on, you know, right now, study of is taking its time to reach where it is supposed to. Uh, I have that freedom to, you know, to think uh, every day. I, I I get a new idea, or I think, okay, I can make this product. For example, switch magnets. What can I do differently with switch magnets? How can I make them differently? And you know, how will they be different? What what can I do about it? So all that I, that creative makeover thing, it's always in my mind, and uh, you know, it's a uh, so, so that, and that is going to be the core of Chatty Work for um, Yeah, so so this is where I am at this point with Chatty Work. 
uh, after discussing my journey, I thought we'll uh, talk about uh, lessons learned. And there'll be some questions. Uh, I'll tell you my version or my answer for this question. But you know, if you really want to uh, uh, think about or find out your passion, what you want to do, try answering these questions for yourself. It will give you a lot of answers, a lot of insights into what you really want to do. What you really want to do. So uh, the first one is: Should entrepreneurship mean the same thing? When we when we hear the term entrepreneur, we just immediately see that someone who is doing something or who is or who started a venture and the entrepreneur was so and so in so much time. It's more to do with timelines and numbers. And so should that mean the same to all? What does it mean to you? Okay. So for me, entrepreneurship is more about uh, exploration. It's more about you know reaching there gradually, but being very happy. I for me, it's not about how much did I, uh, what was my turnover at the end of the year. It would be uh, what new or what what new did I explore? What new product did I create? What was the feedback that I got? Am I being able to reach more and more people? And then the second question would be the sales or the So I feel that if you answer the first question, I mean that's my view. Everyone will decide to do it. But if if you take care of the first one, that how how happy are you or how are the people? Are you are you connected to people? Are you creating something? Are you really doing what what the thought that you had started with? Are you still into that? If that is taken care of, the sales and everything follows eventually. So that's what it means to be. Then secondly, what are the parameters of this? How do you say that, okay, this venture is successful. I started this and it is successful. How would you, what would it be your It would be your sales. It would be your sales. It would be your sales. It would be your but the parameters could also be that uh, initially there used to be uh, you know two people or you know n, n number of people who would contact me and appreciate the work and you know inquiries coming in and now it it has multiplied so every day on a regular basis we do them off the we get around we get to mail uh, you know those numbers are increased so that tells me that I am going in the right direction and I am in so that's for me uh, judging whether this venture is going to be successful or it will be successful is yeah how many people to be reacting. Okay. The third one is are the tried and tested ways always the best way to go or is ignorance in this case uh, This was very applicable uh, because I was from an IT background. I really didn't know how this works. And like I said, I well, I had no option. I just literally had to approach people directly. So for me, I, I do think that uh, sometimes you know ignorance is indeed It does work for you. It does really, really work for you. So sometimes it gives you because I did not know, you know uh, how are these, uh, how does it work? How does this uh, design work? Uh, you know, bulk production. How does it work? How do you? I I carved my own path. Because I did not know how to go around that path, I thought that no, I want to create this path where I want to And that that became the USP of structure. Sometimes ignorance is ridiculous. So if you do not know something, if you do not know something out of it, start thinking on your own. Think what you want to do. How would you approach it? It's okay if you don't know how someone else is doing it. Try your own way. That's okay because. What is standard or what are rules now must have been tried by someone in the past. So it's fine if you don't know, rather take it as an advantage because you have a fresh perspective. You have a fresh outlook. So you will you will try to do things maybe if someone thought that way. So maybe you are actually you know better off. Okay. Uh, the last two points are how important is going with the flow? Is it an excuse for the week or a weapon for the other? So when I say going with the flow, I don't mean that you know my life is going on like this. Okay, let it be. 
If you're passionate about something, you will have to follow it. You will really have to work towards it. That's fine. What I mean by this is that don't be this. Be work. Suppose you had chopped out a path for yourself. Something new comes in which you had really not imagined or not thought of. Will you will you take it up? Will you take that opportunity or will you say no? I had not thought about this. I think you need to follow this. For example, right now I'm I will I'm doing the regular courses that I do, and uh, uh, this lady she contacted me and said that uh, it's calling me, and uh, she wants uh, that it was artwork as a theme for her whole you know beauty class and the walk through and everything. Now this is something I have not done, before. and she said I want uh, you know a piece that is very colorful, that is kind of rich, very tight, and you know, a new piece. And it, it was a completely new venture, and I, I, you know, wanted to do full justice because it was so amazing. And I, I said, yeah, I will, I will, I will do a full session. Now that opens up a number of new avenues. And on the other hand, sometimes you plan so many things, you know, you see that you have 20 contacts, and you're going to contact all of them, show the product, and and you expect a very positive response. Sometimes that does not happen. So then it's okay. You can just leave it. So it's always better to not go against nature. If something is coming towards you, just go with it. You know, don't try to block it. If if you feel it's uh, it's, it's risky, so, you know, if you feel it's not appropriate for your venture, that's fine. But the, if you're leaving it because you're scared, you think it's, it's risky, and you don't know what the outcome is, then definitely do it. Because if nature has brought something to you, even if you don't succeed, it will be a very important. That's what I've learned, and that's that's what I would really want to do. And the final question is: Are you a hunter gatherer? So this animal that you see in the in the corner, uh, I mean, I salute this animal. <laughs> He's my inspiration. So I'm not sure if how many of you know about the hunter gatherer, but there's this very interesting video on YouTube, uh, you know, uh, a recording on how how badger is and what it is. So uh, in life, I think uh, if you really want to pursue something, you should be a honey badger. Uh, for example, if, uh, if a honey badger is coming okay, and it's, it looks around and it sees a beehive, it wants to have honey, and it's a beehive, they're like thousands or whatever, lack of bees there, it will just get into the beehive and it will get the honey. And there will be all these bees stinging the honey badger. It doesn't matter. It's for a very thick thing, so nothing happens to it. It's amazing. It just keeps. It just has the honey and it just goes. If it's hungry, if a snake, there's a snake. It will just hold it and it will start eating. So you know the saying is, honey badger doesn't do the damn. If it has to do something, it will. Do. You know, if someone is hurting it, it doesn't care. It was so amazing. It's eating a pink cobra and the pink cobra actually stings it. And the honey badger, after five minutes, falls unconscious. So people can be dead for five minutes. Five minutes, and it's back up, and it, it starts eating the pink cobra again, like nothing happened. So whatever, I mean, it's it's so amazing. I feel whatever life throws at you, so you face failure ten times. Just remember, what are you here for? You're hungry. You have to eat. You have that vision. You have to eat. That's the only option. If someone says it's a failure, fine. What? Your is that for you? But if your vision is clear, I don't think there's anything that can stop you. But just, just remember why you're here. Just think about the honey badger, how it doesn't do the thing. It just does what it has to. And I'm, I'm sure there will be, be nothing stopping you. So uh, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, just a quick exercise. Uh, I, I had to get a list of five questions for all of you. Uh, after the session, uh, you can you can ask yourself these questions. You don't need to answer them right now, but I just quickly go through the questions. Ask yourself these questions and see what what answers you get. It will give you a, a lot of insight into what you see and what's your perspective. You know, what are your ideas in mind? And if you feel you should change them, some of them, maybe you can do that. So, for example, the first thing: What is that one thing that makes you feel alive? It could be a hobby or an idea. Something you can imagine doing even after 30 years in 
For example, if I'm painting, I can paint for 12 hours and I don't feel tired. I would feel so happy. I would feel that, wow, you know, this has been a productive day. So what is that one thing that you, you, you can never get tired of? Once you identify that, what is that one thing about it that makes you stand out? For example, if someone loves crafting, how is that person crafting for it different from everything? That's about identifying the thing. If you really want to take it forward, there, there must be, and there always is. There, basically, you, you are selling your emotion. There is always something that is about you, you know, that makes that product. So you, you know, someone, someone said that when you sell, when you're giving something, you're selling, you're selling something, it's actually a part of you. It's a part of your emotion. Okay, it's part of that vibration. If you're sending out happy vibrations, your product will, will show. So just, just try to find out what is it that, that makes it different. Then third is who is your target audience? Who do you see buying this product or buying this idea? So initially, like I said, you know, that, that change in pricing, that time, that this question really helped me understand that. Because my target audience was people, uh, they were people who love art, who really, really like uh, artwork. And uh, you know, when they see a product, they just they don't see a poster. They just see an art show, they would think, oh, this is just a poster, but it has a thing. Okay. You know, so that was my target audience. Once I identified that, then I had to find ways to reach the target audience. So that is all that was left. So try to find out who do you see buying this product. That's a very important thing. Next, I imagine a scenario where the response from buyers is not like you expected. Okay? What is the first thought that comes to mind? Suppose imagine you are in uh, you, you show something like this is a hand and you feel the reaction. You, know, you were so excited about it, but people the reaction was not what you expected. What what is it that comes to me? First I was wrong, I should change. I'm very sure of my work, but the world demands something else, so I'm going to change. Or I know this is the right way to go and visualize my future, so I need to keep trying and keeping the right way. If you feel that this person didn't like it, so this is not the right way. But I know that I'm, I'm right. I mean that it was number two for me. So you can ask yourself what what is it for you. Finally, imagine if you do not make as much money out of your venture for some initial years, what is the thought that comes to you? So you've been working towards it and you're getting some positive response. Some initial years you feel that it's more of a struggle. What thought what is the thought that was the wrong decision, or if this is something I love to do and nothing is doing, I'm willing to continue to follow my dream, then it gets you to the place. You just feel that I don't care. I mean, I am so happy doing this, and it's going to, I know that it's going to be that place. You're very sure about it. Just see what, what answers come to you, and this will give you a lot of insight to what you want to do. So, thank you. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, Chapter Work Journey and I hope it will help all of you uh, in the house and if you want to be all of you in the house and how you feel that you are in the time to go to the Thanks a lot. Divya, over to you. Uh, thank you, Kathy. Thanks for the such an inspirational session. So um, everyone, you can just type down your questions in the question panel on the right hand side. In the meantime, I'll just uh, uh, I'll just read out. Or should you would are you able to see the question, Kathy? Uh, if you want, I can read them out to you. Okay, the Go ahead. Sure. Uh, so, um, so if you just give me a second, I'm trying to pull this out. Sure. Hmm. Um, so in the meantime, what I can do is I can just launch a poll. So this is the, uh, for the people who would lo like to take an online course from Digital Vidya or who would like to know more about the courses which we offer. And I would re request every one of you to just select yes or no in the question poll and we'll, we'll connect with you later. So I'll just give five more seconds to the people to answer the poll and post that we can 
start with the question and answer round. Sure. So are you ready with Kathy with the questions? Yeah. Yes, yes you, can you can read out the questions. And uh, yeah. yeah, you go ahead you can read out the questions and I will answer them. Sure, Chika. So I'm just closing down the poll and let's start with the questions. Um, so Kunjal wants to appreciate you for such a great session and he also wants to know whether we can send out the questions you to ask yourself. Yes, yeah, sure, Kunjal, we can send out the questions. And Shruti is asking where are where you went to get guidance before making any decision. What did other than research you did on internet? So for so, guidance, yeah. Okay, so when you talk about guidance uh, before making any decision, so I did not go to anyone. It was purely my interest. and again because I I felt that if, if this product was in the market, I would love to buy it. That was enough of a uh, thing for me to, to make a decision. I knew that it has to be decision. So it was it was purely on instinct, it's purely on my understanding. And yes, I feel that being in the professional world for uh, you know, the past eleven years now, that that does help me a lot directly or indirectly. So uh, and other than research on the internet, I mean regarding I'm not sure regarding what. So regarding the product, if you say, uh, I think internet was the best way to go. You know, I, I would surf the net for hours and then out for techniques. There's so much stuff. And so I think it was it was actually purely easy. Great. So uh, another question from Shruti. She's asking, investing money is always a risk, even you, if you have confidence. If it is something more than 50k from you, what are the advices regarding budget you want to give and how much should a person invest and what's the right time to invest? That's a, that's a good question and uh, you can imagine, you know me, I was, I was, I, was, I really did not have any investors starting me. I didn't even know, you know I was just starting out and I agree initially it, it's a I don't think it's a very good idea to invest too much in your venture, and that was one of the main reasons, uh, uh, you know, that I felt that I have to, to, you know, what what do I do? I don't have that kind of investment. I don't want to invest so much initially, uh, but I want to, um, you know, make products. So that's why I went into DIY. That's why I went into do it yourself. That's why I went into making everything uh, handmade. So again, okay, you will have to uh, find a middle path. And once you start, uh, you know, exploring the options, thinking about other way out, I think you will find your own. Way. So in my case, it was really uh, applicable. It was like, uh, yeah, I don't want to invest so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make these hand painted monsters. I'm going to make these hand painted posters. And what started out as a, a this eventually became the USP of the company. So uh, do not, I, I will suggest you know, finding a, a workaround or finding an alternative way initially. Once you have these pillars, then you can invest. So for me, the option was DIY for you, maybe that is your interest. So hope that answers Shruti. Going forward, Chaitanya is asking, how do you build database of potential customer for your product? Okay, so uh, on my e-commerce store, uh, we have this uh, subscription uh, option. Uh, so that is a, that is one of the uh, things to wherever visit the website that is using uh, their details. Uh, also uh, through uh, social media, you know, actually to, uh, for some people, so when inquiries come in, and uh, then they visit the site again. So, uh, so that that like that's a very uh, big database for that. Also, the orders that come in for for this store. 
So mostly uh, that's the that's how the data are being collected. And Raju wants to thank you and congratulate you for such a great session. And uh, Devendra is asking, um, so do you create products for others as well. So how do you handle if it, if you get a negative feedback? How you deal with them? Yeah. Uh, here I say uh, being again sometimes indirectly or directly uh, your IT work helps you. We uh, are taught professionalism right from the beginning. So being professional is very important. Uh, you have to. So we learned here in the IT that you know the customer has to be given the first priority. If someone is not happy with a product or if, if there are times when you create a product and because of something, some reason it, it, it does not look or it does not turn out the way it is supposed to be, then you have to accept complete responsibility. That time, you know, taking responsibility and you know giving the customer all the options that he expects for example. So there were these three steps that I had to do. And on, on one of them, the print actually came off. While I, I, I had ensured that the quality was good, but sometimes these things happen. And the, the customer came back and said, don't go to Germany. So I gave them all the options. I said, you can take your money back. You can uh, buy something else from us. So you know, so this is tried to, I mean, we, we gave them all the options, and the customer was pretty OK with it. They came in thinking that we will not accept it or we will say, you know, do this. I'm not going to have to engage them. So, so you have to take it professionally. Okay. Um, Rina is asking, what are the what is the most viable way to start uh, to invest money in a startup? Should you go for your own money or you, should you take a loan? Now, uh, do you See, if you do have your own money, uh, see, initially, uh, for me, I would say I would not uh, take a loan. I, but again, it, it depends on what you think for me. For me, I wanted to use my own money uh, because if, uh, God forbid, something uh, you know, goes through wrong or something does not get planned, uh, you know, someone else is not impacted. I mean, that's what my experience is. And, uh, uh, like I said, I, I used to go to on-site for my IT work. Uh, for all those uh, on-site trips, we used to get this for DM or we used to get salary from us. So I used all of that. It was in addition to my salary. I used all that money in buying salary. I could have taken a loan and you know bought all that raw material. But I preferred using my own So that's what my ideology is. But if, if you think uh, you know, the loan Sachin is asking, um, so since we are a digital marketing training institute, so what are your digital marketing uh, activities for attracting customers to KathyWorks.com? Uh, so uh, one major part is uh, Facebook, social media, Twitter, Instagram, all that. Is. Uh, apart from that, I uh, am always on the uh, lookout for uh, for example, at times, you know, bloggers would approach me or uh, there would be some industry uh, you know, that, that someone would approach me. But sometimes I do approach people, you know. They are also looking out for uh, for startups or for people who are doing something. So again, uh, you know, like I'm very active on LinkedIn. I, would keep, uh, uh, I keep in touch with the editors of magazines and, uh, you know, keep discussing ideas with them. So, uh, so I do approach uh, you know, uh, these uh, people who have who write blogs or fashion blogs, and I think that gives you a lot of motivation. So it has to be both ways. You can't expect every time uh, you know that that uh, to contact you. Sometimes you can do that too, and why not? They're, they're more than happy to showcase you and your product. Why not? Absolutely. So, like we even invite Kathy to the webinar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Raju is asking you regarding your schedule for daily activities. So how hectic it is to manage both the programs? Uh, that's, that's a lovely question. <laughs> uh, 
uh, I'll give you an example. This week has been crazy. I've been working almost 12 hours a day uh, for my IT stuff. There's a lot of things happening. And I've still managed to talk out, you know, take out this one hour. I just did that to my manager that I'm sitting off my phone. Just give me one hour and I will be speaking uh, you know, after this. So if you are really passionate about something, if you really want something to work, you will take out time on and off in between your schedule. So yes, it is very hectic. But I'm, I feel I'm always able to take out half an hour here, 10 minutes there, you know, just, just post an update, just posting the product on Facebook. Something or the other, it, it always keeps happening. And I don't even feel that I'm working. So it, it's round the clock. I'm always working for customers, always moving work from here. If you've gone out for dinner and I happen to cross a store, which I feel has a lot of electric products, I would immediately stop there and uh, give my card. And that's how things work. You're always thinking, you're always utilizing or thinking of the store as a perspective. So we could, you could put your merchandise. So, I mean, it, it's round the clock. But it does not feel that way. Because I just enjoy both. Yeah. So Reena, Reena is asking, uh, what about the compet uh, competition copying your ideas and executing the same? Do you protect your designs? Hmm. See, uh, protecting the designs in the sense that uh, the paintings uh, that I, everything as soon as happy was uh, is created out of my painting, I don't sell the paintings. That's the personal reason. Uh, but uh, I, I just don't ever sell the art. And I have these high resolution scans which are always created with me. So I protect those those scans. I do not share them with anyone. Uh, they're very so when I protect that, uh, you know, in a way, uh, so one one side is protected. That's that's fine. And another thing is, so for people copying uh, a you know a piece, what I do is each piece is unique. Okay? So when people buy a catalog product, they already know that there would be just two or three more pieces like this in the market. So I keep reinventing. I keep changing. I you know, and I I really like. So if you see a poster right now, the next poster will be completely different. It will have to be more interesting. So things keep changing. They are, they are, they are really random. That's how I keep happening. So that's, the, that's how it also gets, you know, the, the copy that is uh, it, it So um, Kanak and Chaitanya wants to ask, what are your marketing strategies for Kathy Work? Marketing strategy, yeah. Uh, like I think we had a similar question before this. Uh, so it's I the marketing strategy that I would follow is approaching, uh, you know, uh, bloggers or editors or uh, and then social media. So I think it would be a repetition of what I did. Another question from Devendra. So, how do you keep changing yet maintain the brand image? Yeah. Keep changing and yet maintain the brand image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that also happens automatically because I'm always on the lookout for new products. Okay. So, if I've made a, a range of uh, uh, posters, the next day I would, uh, you know, I would feel, okay, I want to start here at this. So I would, and now, how do you give hair accessories? And so uh, I keep changing the kind of product I'm working on. So the product list of that is ever easy. And uh, I have that uh, you know, creative freedom right now because I don't pester myself all the time about sales or you know, I, I focus more on uh, you know, covering as many more products as I can, adding more new products to the line. And that's what, uh, you know, keep happy with uh, that, that really trendy thing. So, off here I started with these brooches. They are so cute. You know, that, that's the reason. And I started with paper napkin folders, which are very different. They are made out of hand painted stone. So, it's not one I've thought about it like that. Then there are these hand painted shoes. So, I mean, the, 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 the variety keeps increasing. And, and the kind of product, even I don't know what, what I will come up with. Okay. 
uh, Ramanath is asking, so does your entrepreneurship success impact your prof professional life? Well, you will be surprised to know, initially I was very hesitant, uh, you know, in getting my company here to you know, feel that I, I will not be, I will be distracted or whatever. And second aspect was that, you know, my earnings from practice and my salary, because I am a taxpayer, uh, I have to be very uh, correct that way. You know, so, where, so I was also scared that my company would have an issue with this parallel uh, work that I have. So uh, I discussed it with my manager and he was really very person. And he said, no, this is not a problem. What you do in office, what your work is, that's what we care about. So whatever you're doing, that's your personal thing. So initially it worked out that way. Uh, for my for all the earnings, uh, you know, everything goes into my uh, goes into a family. Not working, so I'm sorted of that front. But what happened eventually? Uh, these articles started coming in papers, and my colleagues and even my bosses, you know, they would read the newspaper, they would find the fabulous article, and they would know it's me. So initially, I thought they would say, oh, "What are you doing?" They were so happy with it. My HR congratulated me. And now they've told me that whenever there's a publication or there's anything about it, please send it to us and we want to you know, put up a print out of it on the So uh, what I initially thought would be, you know, that that would be conflicting, it, it actually works for my profession. They, they say that, you know, at least you are someone who's doing something different or something different to work and we really value it. So everyone thinks the same. So yeah. um, Sayani, yeah. Sayani is ask, is congratulating you for your success and thanking you for the webinar. She is asking, uh, so how do you keep yourself motivated when something goes wrong or, or something is upset? How do you motivate yourself? That's a beautiful question. And for us. Let me tell you, uh, there have out of 20 times, suppose if I've tried, maybe 10, 12, 15 times, I would have failed. And uh, it's very easy to say that I got back up, but it's not, it's not so easy. It's not, it's not an easy so simple. So you do get bogged down for a day, for some hours, you think about, you know, uh, is this really the right thing? So one thing that motivates me is the honey badger. Like I told you, I genuinely, I would, I would request all of you to go and see that video. You know, if if you are really determined and really motivated, if you know you want that too, then whatever hurdles or whatever failures come in between, they are insignificant, really. So after a day or two, I would again go back, look at the product, look at my thinking, and I would be elated. And you know, it's it's something, it's like an electric for the soul. It's like you look at the, I, I look at uh, the paintings and the products and it gives me so much passion. And then I'm like, I don't care. I know that there are people who are going to love this and my work is to reach to those people. They must be waiting for these products. That's what, that's the kind of thought I get. That, oh God, I have to do this. So yes, you know, give yourself that time, give yourself that space to feel bad or, but then after a while just end it. Just leave it there. It doesn't matter. If you, if you like what you're doing, that's all that. And Siani, sure you'll get the recording of the session. Okay, she's uh, asking who is your motivator. It's an animal, it's called honey badger. Okay? It's in the presentation. Just go and just, uh, just want to go through it and see it. Sure, we'll all search for it after this webinar ends. <laughs> so, um, does anyone else has a question? So Kunjal has a question. How do you part your products to make make with so much love and care? And finally, how do you sell it? So uh, nice, very nice question. I'm glad you. I was able to convey this that I make my the products that I make are made with a lot of love and passion. Uh, one thing, the paintings. That's the that's the main reason I never sell my paintings. So there have been we have approached me and said there are buyers and if you like to sell your paintings, whatever the price, I don't care. It's not possible for me to part with those paintings. But yes, uh, for people who like uh, the artwork, there are these products that they can 
Now, uh, it's, it, it was initially uh, you know difficult to part with them, and uh, then I said that the pricing was very average. I felt that you know that that's the reason I think the pricing was again it comes uh, here with this answer because people were buying it. They were you know it was like hunting cats like a baby brought up. But I had made them with so much love and care, and uh, you know, with so, to ensure that the quality is amazing. So, so to now I wanted the products to go in the right hand. I wanted only those people to buy it who would really appreciate and value it. So to do that, I raised, uh, you know, I changed the price. I mean, that's a very frank answer because I did not want uh, it to go in, in with everybody. Maybe it's a very selfish reason, but yes, that is the reason. Now, whoever buys it always gives me a reason why they are buying it. They will always tell me, you know, I'm buying this of my wife, and it's her birthday, it has to be very special. And actually, that gives me the happiness. Yeah, this is what I had started for. Not because someone is going to buy 10 pieces. I want someone to buy one piece, but then that is. I hope that answers your question. She's saying they are like our babies as well. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think we are done with the questions. So I just, I, yes, and we are at four also. So thank you, Khyati. Thanks for such an amazing session. I think everyone else also loved you having here at Digital Vidya. So thank you. And thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week with some other sessions. So do keep yourself free for it. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.